Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. It is the truth. We receive it, written in our heart, written in our mind. We thank you for the revelation of it. We will be hearers and doers of it. We thank you for all that you're accomplishing in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. We've been sharing many messages that are extremely important for you in your Christian life to bring you to the place of being walking in holiness and righteousness and part of the glorious church, walking in victory and overcoming in your life. And today we're going to talk about the subject of obedience. Obedience is absolutely necessary if you are going to see God's blessings come forth and you're going to see him accomplish the things that he purposes in your life. We begin in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the lamb. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with a sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Notice, willing and obedient. Not just obedient because you have to or ought to. You've got to have a willing heart. Many people just go through the motions because they ought to do something or should do something. They're not getting anywhere. You need to have the word in you so you have a willing heart, a willing mind. You want to do what God wants. If you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. God's blessings will come upon you in your life. But notice he says, if you refuse and rebel. So if we're not submissive unto him, not willing, not obedient, we will be devoured by the sword. The enemy will have place in your life. Because of disobedience, it will bring curses upon you in your life. God wants you to set your will that you will choose to do what his word says and be obedient with a willing heart and a willing mind. In Genesis chapter 22, Genesis 22, we pick up in verse 9. This is where Abraham brought Isaac up to the mountain where he was told to go up and offer him as a sacrifice. Of course, he provided himself, the lamb, instead. But his willingness showed the fact that he was willing to give his best, his only son, which, of course, caused the father to be able then, because of covenant, to give his only son, Jesus, to accomplish the redemption. We come to verse 9. They came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there. And he laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham, Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. He was going to go through and slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. He said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Notice, now he knew he had the fear of God before him, which means he didn't know for sure before. People that think that God knows everything of what we're going to do is a lying teaching. This destroys that right here. Did God know definitely that he would do this? No. Now I know that thou fearest God. He sees where you, your obedience is and the fear of the Lord in your life by what you do by your acting on the word, by your obedience to what he tells you to do. And so he goes on and says, Abraham lifted up his eyes, looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went, took the ram, offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. We come down to verse 16. He said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed, which is Christ, remember the seed is Christ, shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Why? Because thou hast obeyed my voice. It was critical for him to obey so that then God could offer his son. And because of the seed, then Jesus, who would come, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. Obedience was necessary. God wants you to be obedient. And as we saw back there talking about now, the fact that I know that you fear me, that shows you something. In the measure that you obey God shows the measure of the fear of God in your life. 
if you don't obey him much, you don't have much of a fear of God before him, before you. Because you know that if you don't obey, curses are going to come. You're not going to see God accomplish his word and promises in your life. We must have the fear of God before us. And that is going to be shown, of course, by your obedience to the word of God. And of course, when you obey his voice, that is going to bring his blessings to you. We also see in Genesis chapter 26, there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, the king of the Philistines and the Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go now down into Egypt. Don't go to Egypt. Dwell in the land that I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in the land, I'll be with thee. I'll bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed will I give all these countries. I will perform the oath that I swear unto Abraham thy father. I'll make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give unto thy seed all these countries. And thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice, kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And so Isaac, he obeyed, and he dwelt here in Gerar. Notice, he told him not to go down to Egypt. Once you've come out of Egypt, you don't go back to Egypt. Egypt is a type of the world. We are not going back to the ways of the world. We are now going to walk in the ways of the Lord. And he told them the fact that he would be the one that I go to the place that I'm going to tell you of. I will be with you. I will bless you. You need to trust the Lord that he is going to meet all of your needs. You need to trust in him that he will perform his promises in your life. Believe his word. Don't go back to the ways of the world. Don't go back to anything else except for trusting in him, knowing that he will perform the word in your life. Exodus chapter 19. Obedience is absolutely a necessity. Here is a prophecy that was given in Exodus 19 verse 5. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, when you obey his voice, you're keeping his word, and that's how, of course, you keep his covenant. Then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Well, this couldn't come to pass for them to all be a priest until the New Testament age came, because only the tribe of Levi were priests at this time. But notice... It was necessary for them to be obedient and keep the covenant if they were going to see God accomplish the things that he purposed for them in their life. God wants you to understand obedience and keeping the covenant, obeying the word of God is absolutely necessary if you are going to see God accomplish his promises for you in your life. In Exodus chapter 23, we come, first of all, we come to verse 19. And he talked about the tithe here, where he said, The first of the first fruits of thy land, which is the tithe, the first fruit of what of God blessing us, shalt thou bring into the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. And then he says, Behold, I send an angel before thee. Otherwise, if you are bringing the tithe, you're being obedient unto him, you're doing what he says. I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. This means to guard and to bring thee into the place that I have prepared. The angels of God minister for us, the heirs of salvation. And they will bring things. Well, it's not showing up right. I don't know why that is. We must have it set a little bit off. We'll work on that. Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, to bring thee in the place which I prepared. So here he says, he's going to bring you to this place. Um, unfortunately, though, if we don't obey, is he going to do that? No. Are the angels going to work for us? No, they're not going to do that. He said, Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. So we need to be obeying the voice of what the angels were bringing forth, which was the word of God. If we do so, then God will bring forth his blessings. Notice what he says if we'll obey in verse 22. If thou shalt indeed obey, obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. Obedience to the word of God is absolutely essential. You'll be an enemy to your enemies, adversary 
to your adversaries. But mine angels shall go before thee, bring thee in unto the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hivites, Jebusites, and I'll cut them off. Otherwise, God will eliminate your enemies. He will bring forth victory for you. Well, we need to be obedient. If we're not obedient, is he going to fight against us? Is he going to be an enemy, an adversary against him? No. No way. It's not going to happen. Hopefully you can just read Young's, the YLT, and that'll show you most all the information. In Exodus chapter 24, we pick up over here in verse 7. It says he, says, he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people, and they said, All that the Lord hath said will we do and be obedient. All that the Lord has said. That's the commitment that you and I have, want to have. The book of the covenant, that's the word of God. Everything that he says, be a doer of it, be obedient to it. Hearers and doers of the word build the spiritual house. Hearers and doers of the word are walking in his way so that God can bring his promises to pass in your life. It's absolutely essential. If they do that, then this is what happened. He said, Moses took the blood, sprinkled it on the people, and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which God hath made with you concerning all these words. What does that tell you? That tells you that if you do the first part, all that the Lord says that you, you're to do and to be obedient, carrying it out, then Moses, who's a type of Christ, will apply the blood to you. And then you will be cleansed, as we see over in the New Testament. In fact, we can see this over in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. You and I are to be walking in the light continually. Now, this where it talks about walking in the light here, this is a conditional statement. It means you have to do it. Otherwise, the blood's not going to be applied to you unless you meet the conditions. Because this is a subjunctive mood verb, which means it's a conditional statement. The present tense means it's to be ongoing continuousness. Present tense means continuous repeated action. So this would say if you may be walking in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Therefore, as you are obedient and walking in the light, you're going to see the blood of Jesus applied for you in your life. Obedience is so important not only in our life now, but also in the days ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 30. He says, When you are in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, that would mean the end times, if thou turn to the Lord thy God, and shall be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God, he will not forsake thee, nor destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. Otherwise, God will be there to protect us. You won't, we won't see the destruction come when the judgments are coming on the nations. He won't forget his covenant. He'll perform it. God will protect us. He is a merciful God. Well, that's why we need to be sure we turn to the Lord. We put him first place. We be obedient unto his voice, obedient to the word of God. You will be protected in the days to come if you are walking in his ways. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 19. It shall be if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify you this day that you shall surely perish. You can't walk on following anything else but the Lord. He's got to be first place, otherwise... You're not going to be blessed. You'll be perishing. As the nations which the Lord destroyed before your face, so shall you perish. Why? Because you would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. When you're obedient, you'll be blessed. When you're not obedient, what happened? It speaks of these nations here being destroyed because of not walking in the ways of the covenant. God expects us to choose the way of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. 
a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which you've not known. So here we see, you obey, you're going to be blessed. You disobey, curses come upon you. See, curses come for a cause. They don't come just, just however. No, they come because of a cause, because of disobedience, which is sin, giving place to the enemy, allowing him to come and work in your life. Obedience is absolutely essential. Deuteronomy 13, we pick up in verse 3. Thou shalt not hearken to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. God wants to find out. You shall walk after the Lord your God, fear him and keep his commandments, and obey his voice, and you shall serve him and cleave unto him. Again, if you walk after the way of the Lord, you will have the fear of the Lord. You will be keeping his commandments. You will be obeying his voice. You'll be serving him and cleaving unto him. That is what God is looking for. When you do this, God will do great things in your life. At the same time, we cannot be rebellious and disobedient. Look what happened in Deuteronomy 21, 18. He says, if a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they've chastened him, they, he will not hearken unto them, he still would be continually rebellious. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold of him and bring him out of the elders of the city and of the gate of this place. And they shall say unto the elders of this city, our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He's a glutton and he's a drunkard. What's going to happen to him? All the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he dies, so thou shalt put away evil from among you. All Israel shall hear and fear. Notice, they had to put away all the evil. That's why they had to kill them off in the New Old Testament era, because you couldn't get rid of the demons out of them in the Old Testament era. But now, of course, we can get cleansed by the blood of Jesus, and we can cast out the demons, and we can be set free from these bondages. Notice, he was stubborn, he was rebellious, he would not obey. You've got to get rid of all stubbornness and rebellion out of your life. Choose to obey, do the things that God wants, be yielded unto him. And notice, he was a glutton and a drunkard. Why is a glutton and a drunkard in trouble? Because they have not dealt with the flesh. If they're drinking continually, they're continually sinning, walking in the flesh. If they're continually stuffing themselves, being a glutton and not dealing with themselves, they're continually walking in the flesh, which means they're continually walking in sin. They're abiding in evil. These guys die. They're not going to be right with the Lord whatsoever. The evil has to be put away in our life. Confess your sin, repent, turn from it, and walk in the ways of the Lord. Deuteronomy 27, verse 9. Moses and the priests, the Levites, spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed and hearken, O Israel, this day thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God, and do his commandments and statutes which I command you this day. When did we become the people of God? When we got born again. Does that mean now I'm born again and everything's fine and I can do anything I want? No. Because you have come into that, obey the voice of of the Lord, do his commandments and statutes that I command you. In other words, now we are to walk in obedience to the commandments of God so he can bring his blessings. Then we come to Deuteronomy 28. Notice what he says. It shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. You will be exalted by God. He goes on and says, And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake you if you hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Again, being obedient unto the word of God, the voice of the Lord, brings blessings upon you. Notice, they'll not only come on you, they'll overtake you. You can't even get away from them. That's what God wants. That means we need to diligently hearken unto him. We can't be slothful. We can't be lazy. We can't do it if we feel like it. You need to set your life that you're going to walk in line with the Word of God to see God's blessings come. But what happens if you don't obey? Is God just going to wink his eye and say, forget it, that's no big deal? No. Verse 15. It shall come to pass, if thou shalt not 
hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and statutes that I command you this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. The curses will come on you. You can't get away from them. And they cover physical problems, mental problems, emotional problems, family problems, hindrances to prosperity, all kinds of sickness and disease that are, left, that are listed. In fact, he even told them down in verse 62, they're going to, what's going to happen to them? He said, you shall be left few in number. They're all going to die out. Whereas you were as the stars of heaven for multitude. Why would they all die out? because they would not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. Obedience is absolutely necessary. You're in covenant relationship with God. He expects you to do these things. Deuteronomy 30, verse 1, It shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice. According to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart, with all thy soul, then, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. God doesn't want you to stay in captivity. He's a merciful God. He's compassionate. He wants to bring you out of it. He will have compassion upon thee, will return and gather thee from all the nations where the Lord thy God has scattered thee. That's what happened with Israel. And when the time, when the curse was over, the time period had gone, he's brought them back in as a nation. Well, the same principle works. He'll bring them back into fellowship with him if you will turn and obey and do all the things that he says. You must understand you have a free will. And you can choose to do what God says or you can choose not to what he, do what he says. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. You need to make the right choice. Notice, God's not in control of your will. He's not going to make you do a particular thing. He's given you a free will. You need to make the right choice. Of course, what's he tell us to do? Choose life, of course, but both thou and thy seed may live. Notice, it carries on to the inheritance line because we know the blessings will come down the inheritance line, but also the curses will come because of the iniquities of the forefathers. And notice also, as you choose life, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that thou mayest obey his voice, that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them. And ultimately, where is that? That's with the Father and Jesus in the eternal place in the New Jerusalem. That's where we're going, headed for and that's where we're going to. We see over in Joshua in chapter 5. Joshua. Chapter 5, verse 6. Here it speaks of those who, remember they were in the wilderness, which is the place of proving and testing to find out if they would follow the Lord and obey Him or not. Joshua 5, 6. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness. 40 is the number of testing. Till all the people that were men of war, these guys were trained up as warriors. Just because they were trained up as warriors doesn't mean they're gonna be, everything's going to be great. No. What happened? Which came out of Egypt, they were consumed. Why? Because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. You can be trained up in something one minute, but if you don't obey and walk the walk, you're in trouble. These guys, they obeyed not the voice of the Lord, and to whom the Lord swore he would not show them the land which the Lord swore unto their fathers, that he would give us a land that floweth with milk and honey. The same thing's true for us. If we won't walk in the ways of the Lord, are we going to enter into the spiritual land that God has for us? No, it's not going to happen. Obedience is necessary for blessings now and also in the future. Judges chapter 2. Verse 1, Angel Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochum and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you into the land which I swear unto your fathers and I said I will never break my covenant with you. God will never break his covenant. He will always perform his word. You shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Well, who were the inhabitants of the land? They were all the enemies. You shall throw down their altars. Of course, they were also to cast them out and destroy them and get rid of them. They weren't supposed to allow them to stay there, which saw a type of you. 
getting rid of all the things that are idolatrous in your life, anything that puts God, God behind something else, you put God first place, see? And also you get rid of all the evil inhabitants, which is casting out all the demons out of every area of your life. Notice what he said, but you've not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? They wouldn't obey. You say, why haven't you obeyed? Wherefore, I also said, I will not drive them out before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their, your, their God shall be a snare unto you. Any areas of sin or any areas of things that you keep in your life or you do not get rid of, it'll be just bringing destruction against you. Evil spirits that you leave in you, they will work against you. They will be vexing you in some way in your life. We cannot allow that. We've got to cast them all out. Obedience is absolutely necessary. In 1 Samuel, we see here something important. In chapter 8, the Samuel was old at this time. Verse 5, they came to him and he said, the people said, Behold, thou art old, thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now, they weren't making right choices. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. God wasn't ready to have a king yet. It wasn't the time for a king to come forth. They wanted to be like all the nations. They, wanted, they didn't want to, you know, be under the prophet anymore who was going to tell them the word of God and tell them what they needed to do. They wanted to be under a king instead. The thing displeased Samuel when he said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. Otherwise, they didn't want to be under God's judgment of his word. They didn't want to be submissive to his word anymore. The Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. That tells you something. Anybody who is not obedient to the word of God is rejected the Lord. They rejected his rule and reign over their life. If we make him Lord of all, then we will do the things that he says. That is what he expects for us in our life. They didn't want his reign over his life whatsoever. Well, according to all the works I've done since the day that I brought them out of Egypt, even to this day, wherefore of wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet protest solemnly before them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And he proceeds to talk to them about that, how they're going to be oppressing them, how they're going to be servants to them, how they're going to be taking their money from them, all the different things that it goes on and, and discusses. Well, we come down to verse 18 and 19, and he says, You shall cry out on that day because of your king which you have chosen, which you have chosen you, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. When you don't choose to obey God, God's not going to hear you because you're now in disobedience until you repent and come back in line with his word. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel and said, Nay, we will have a king over us. They wanted a king over them. They didn't want to have any more that they would have God's word directing them. And notice what it says, that we also may be like all the nations and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Not only did they not want to submit to what God told them to do in his word, they didn't want to fight anymore. Oh, that's a mistake. You and I are to fight the battles of the Lord and to fight the good fight of faith. People that don't want to submit unto God, under his word, and will not enter into the spiritual fight against the enemies are in disobedient. That's rebellion. That's laziness and a slothfulness. You want somebody else to do it. Don't ever let that be upon you. You are a warrior for the Lord and you are to fight the battles of the Lord. 1 Samuel 12, verse 14. If you will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice. Notice, it's not just obeying, it's also having the fear of God and serving him. And not rebel against the command of the Lord. Then shall both you and also the king that reigneth over you continue following the Lord your God. But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord and rebel against the command of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you as it was against your fathers. Again, we see the same thing. You obey, God's blessing will be there. You disobey, God's actually against you. 
He's not going to do anything for you. We see even in the New Testament where it talks about the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, ears are open to their prayers. Oh, he's ready to respond to the prayers of the righteous. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. He's going to be against you if you walk in the ways of disobedience and not hearken unto what he tells you to do. We come down to 1 Samuel 15, and here we see Saul. Saul was the king, but Saul didn't do things the way God told him to do it. He did it his way. He partially obeyed, but he didn't carry things out exactly. That tells you, you know, we can't just obey on certain things and then I'll do it my way over here the way I want to do it and, and ignore other things. Samuel said to Saul, The Lord sent, uh, sent me to anoint you to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. So he was supposed to hearken to it. But let's see what happened. Did he hearken to it? No, he didn't hearken to it. Verse 17, Samuel came to him and said, When thou wast little in thy own sight, and thou wast made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over, over Israel. And the Lord sent thee on a journey, and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Malachites, and fight against them till they be consumed. That was what he told them to do. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord? But they did fly upon the spoil. They took the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord. They didn't destroy as they were supposed to. Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I've obeyed the voice of the Lord. He obeyed it in the way he wanted to. Look what he says. I've gone the way which the Lord sent me, and I brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Malachites. Well, he was supposed to destroy them all. So why was he bringing the king back? And then also, look what he says. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. Who was the leader? He was the king. Who was supposed to be telling him what to do? The king. What was he doing? He was in compromise. He let the people do what they wanted to do. And of course, what's he doing? He's casting the blame. Oh, it was the people's fault, not my fault. No. It was his fault because he did not rule the way he was supposed to and tell them what to do. And he allowed them to do these things. We can't compromise. We can't cast the blame on something else. It's not going to work. We need to carry out what God says. Samuel said, Hath the Lord his great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices of getting these things and then sacrificing them to the Lord? No, he wanted them all destroyed. As in obeying the voice of the Lord, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken from the fat of rams. God's interest in obedience and hearkening unto him. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Why is that? Because witchcraft is all about controlling somebody else. Rebellion is is you in control instead of God in control. I will do what I want to do. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Stubbornness, again, idolatry, is you're putting something else as, as before God, as the first place. We cannot be stubborn. We cannot be rebellious. Otherwise, we're trying to be controlling and dominating and do what we want to do, our way. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. That's the principle. Disobedience, rebellion, not obeying God, will stop you from being able to rule or reign as a king. Even though you are a king, you won't rule and reign over anything until you come to the place of repentance and get right in your life. Saul said unto Samuel, I've sinned, for I've transgressed the commandment of the Lord and the words, but because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Again, he's still trying to justify a little bit why he's in the situation. He made a mistake. God does not want us to compromise for people. Do not let people stop you from obeying the word of God. Not mother, father, son, daughter, wife, husband, friend, foe, whoever it might be. You need to be obe obedient to the word of God and you cannot let anybody hinder you from obeying. It really shows that you have the fear of the people instead of the fear of God. Otherwise, you would never disobey God. If you had the fear of God, you'd make sure you obey Him. See, the fear of God will always cause you to obey God. But instead, they feared the people. They didn't have the fear of God. He made a big mistake and obeyed their voice. We cannot compromise 
and give place to, the, to any kind of compromise and disobey God's word. 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 17. The Lord hath done to him as he spake by me, for the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of thy hand and given it to thy neighbor, even to David. He lost the kingdom. Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executest his fierce wrath upon Amalek. He was supposed to destroy them. Well, you and I are supposed to cast out all the devils and destroy the works of the enemy. You're, you, you're not obeying. Are you executing God's wrath against your enemies? No. Therefore, the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. We need to be pursuing our enemies and driving them out and doing the things that God says. Obedience is absolutely essential. 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 4. If thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, in integrity of heart, in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded thee, and will keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. As I promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. Otherwise, they'd continue to rule and reign. He goes on and says, But if you shall at all turn from following me, you are your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them. And that's what you're doing. If you're not serving God, you're serving something else, and that becomes an idol. It might be you. It might be a person. It might be the ways of the world, whatever it might be. If we're not obeying God's commandments, we have an idol in our life of some sort, whatever we're obeying. He said, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them. Then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hallowed for my name will I cast out of my sight. Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. You know, God's going to follow his word. And we must put his word first place in our life. Here's even a case in 1 Kings chapter 20 where this prophet was obeying God at first, but then he made a critical mistake. 1 Kings 20, verse 36. Then said he unto them, Because thou hast not obeyed the voice of the Lord, behold, as soon as thou art departed from me, a lion shall slay thee. And as soon as he was departed from him, a lion found him and slew him. Well, who's the lion? That's the devil. When you give place to disobedience, what happens? The devil's after you. Remember, the devil goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour and he will go after you, and he will destroy you and bring destruction upon you if you don't obey and do what he says. Notice, he was after him right away. As soon as he left, he got slain. The enemy seeks to destroy. You give place to him, then he will come after you. 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 11. The king of Assyria did carry away Israel and Assyria. They went into captivity. Put them in Hala and Habor by the river of Gozan and the cities of the Medes. Why? Because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant. And all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded would not hear them nor do them. They didn't want to hear them. If someone doesn't even want to hear the word of God, they're in trouble. Every one of us need to hear the word, but also to do the word and to carry it out. Obedience to the word is absolutely essential in your life to bring blessings. Look what happened over here in Nehemiah. See, this was their history. They walked in sometimes in obedience, and then the next minute they didn't. Nehemiah 9.16, They and our fathers dealt proudly and hardened their necks and hearkened not to thy commandments and refused to obey. Neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them, but hardened their necks. Well, they were stubborn. And in their rebellion appointed a captain to return to their bondage. Well, they went a different direction. What will happen? If you don't obey, you're going to go right into bondage of some sort. You will go in bondage. The devil will be after you. Remember, Satan's the accuser of the brethren that accuses before God night and day of what? Of our sins which gives them a right according to spiritual law to pursue you with his evil spirits and they will come into you. 
But thou art a God ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, of great kindness, and forsookest them not. He's always ready. You know, God's a merciful God. He's ready to forgive. He's a forgiving God. But you have to meet the conditions if you're going to see things happen. So they did forgive. I mean, they did, you know, here they, of course, they did bad things. But in his manifold mercies in verse 19, he forsook them not. And he would forgive them and then come back and start working, of course. And they were back in fellowship with him. But then verse 26, we see the same old thing happening. Nevertheless, they were disobedient, rebelled against thee. Cast thy law behind their backs. What's a mark of someone who's disobedient? They cast the word behind their back. They're not looking at the word anymore. They're just kind of lay it aside. You can't do that. And also they slew the prophets that testified against them. They were mad about anybody that was telling them to walk in line with the word of God. To turn them to thee and brought great provocations. What happens when you walk in disobedience? Yeah, now you're back in captivity again. Therefore thou shalt deliver them into the hand of their enemies who vexed them. In the time of their trouble, when they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven, and according to thy manifold mercies, gave them saviors who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. You see that in the book of Judges as well. These guys got delivered. A judge was ruling over them. As soon as the judge died out, they went back into the rebellious ways. God had to raise up another judge to come along and deliver them out of it and get them back on track. This shouldn't be happening for you and me. We should be walking in the way of the Lord in obedience all the time. Not in and out and in and out and in and out, up and down, this way and that way. No. We should always be following the way of the Lord. Look what it says if you're obedient, the blessings that will come in Job 36, in verse 11. If they obey and serve him. See, when you obey God, you're going to be serving him and submissive unto what he wants you to do. They shall spend their days in prosperity in their years and pleasures. God wants to prosper you. He gives us all things richly to enjoy. He wants you to be blessed. He wants to give you good things. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword. They shall die without knowledge. Why were they disobeying? They weren't doing the word. And what happens? Remember, if you don't do the word, what happens? The devil takes the word out of their heart, and now you don't have any more knowledge. You lose what you gained. Here they die without knowledge knowledge because they did not follow the way of the Lord. It's mandatory that you obey. Psalms 78 verse 7. Here's the testimony against them or what they were supposed to do. He said in verse 6 that the generation to come might know them even the children which should be born. Well that's pointing towards you and I in the New Testament age, being born again, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. Your hope needs to be set in God. You need to be keeping the commandments of the Lord, doing what He says, so He can bring His promises. And might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. That was what they were continually. Why? A generation that set not their heart aright, you got to set your heart right. Your heart has to be given unto the Lord. You put your heart in line with what God's Word says. You give it unto the Lord. You submit it unto Him. whose spirit was not steadfast with God. The, the children of Ephraim, being armed, they were armed. They were trained up. Carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. Mm, you can't turn back in the day of battle. There is no stopping. You are to fight the good fight of faith and destroy your enemies and drive them all out until there's victory. We just don't do it and then turn back in the day of battle. If so, you're sunk. You're done. That's for sure. In fact, you quit fighting and the devil comes after you and you go back into sin. You're going to have seven more wicked. Remember, if you started to cast out demons and you don't continue to cast them out, you go back in sin, you're going to be in worse shape. They turned back in the day of battle. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law, what a mistake. For God has works and his wonders they had showed him. You'll even come to forget, you'll even forget the things that God has accomplished in your life. You'll lose your mindset of understanding that he is the one who gave you all the victory. That's why we've got to put the word of God first place and do it. Look what it says over in Proverbs 1. It tells us more important things. 
Verse 23, he says, turn you at my reproof. Here he comes to bring correction to him. Remember, we need to be correctable. If we're not correctable, we're like illegitimate and we're not sons. We saw that in Hebrews the other day. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you and I'll make known my words unto you. Notice, if you receive God's correction, then the Holy Spirit will work to bring revelation of his words unto you. He'll make known these things to you. But, because I've called and you refused, I've stretched out my hand and no man regarded. They didn't pay attention to it. You've said it not all my counsel and with none of my reproof. What does that mean now? You're not walking in God's ways? Now what? The devil's coming in and he's going to bring destruction. And he goes on and says, I also will laugh at your calamity. Who brings the calamity? The devil because of the sin. I will mock when your fear comes. Why would your fear come? Because you're getting pummeled by the devil, beaten up left and right with all these calamities coming. God's not going to be responding just because you have a problem. He responds because of your faith and obedience to God's word and being right with him. That's how he works. He goes on and says, when your fear comes as a desolation, your destruction comes only as a whirlwind and when distress and anguish come upon you, all these evil things, that shows you they're coming upon them because of disobedience, given place to the devil. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. God's not a push button God whenever we have a problem. Oh, I got a problem here, even though I'm in rebellion, come and help me and get me out of it. It's not going to happen. I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. But they hated knowledge. It did not choose the fear of the Lord. Which means what are they going to have to do? They're going to have to repent and come in line with knowledge and get the fear of the Lord before them so that they come out of walking in the ways of sin. They were none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. You're going to have to receive the counsel and you're going to have to get back to receiving the correction. You can't just say, oh, help me, I confess my sins without going back and doing all the things that God told you to do before. Oh, we've got to get back to square one and start doing the things that he told us to do. Not just think you can just confess your sin and ignore not correcting the problem that he, or doing what he told you to do before. Oh, we've got to make it all good, don't we? Follow his counsel. Not despise his reproof, but receive his correction. Therefore, shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. Yeah, that's destruction. You can't walk your own way. For the turning of the way of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. See, just because you get prospered doesn't mean you, oh, I don't need God anymore, I can do whatever I want. No. You keep walking in God's ways. You get your eyes off of the Lord, everything's going to be taken away in a moment's time. Whoso hearkeneth unto me, though, shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. He'll be safely secure. That's what we want. Otherwise, the enemy won't be able to get to you because you're walking in line with the Word of God. Obedience, hearkening unto Him, is absolutely of necessity in your life. In fact, we see something here. This is why putting the Word of God first place is essential for every Christian if you're going to ever become what God wants you to be, possess promises, come into the place of being holy, become the part of the perfected, glorious church. Isaiah 65, verse 2, look what he says, I've spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people. What was their problem? Which walketh in a way that was not good. What is the way that they were walking in that was not good? After their own thoughts. Can you walk after your own thoughts and think that you're walking in a way that's good? No. How do we know what way is the right way? Remember, he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. How can we know he has thoughts? His word. His word brings us his thoughts and his ways. Therefore, you need to think, what does the word say in every situation? If you think what the word says, what, what should I do here? What does the word say? What should I think? What should I be speaking? Then, you're going to be walking in the way that is right before the Lord. This was disobedience unto God. Another thing that's important, all this teaching that you've been receiving, that God is bringing forth, what are you doing with it? Have you just heard it and then it just kind of left you? Or have you incorporated it into your lifestyle? Look what it says. Proverbs 5.13 
and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me we've been taught the word and we've been given all this instruction and we're not doing it? There's a problem, isn't there? Remember the guy who was just a hearer only? He has a great ongoing continual fall, doesn't he? He never builds a spiritual house. He builds it on sand. The enemies come in and destroy him left and right. Couldn't stand against him. But the guy who's a hearer and a doer of the word, that means he's obeying the teaching that's been brought forth. He's inclining his ear to the things that he's been instructed. And he's putting the word into operation, incorporating it into his lifestyle. That is essential. If you do that, you'll be blessed. If you don't obey the things you're being taught, there's a problem. Why? Do we just want to hear things and then not be a doer of it? That's why Jesus said, why don't you, how can you call me Lord and not do the things that I say? It doesn't work. No. We need to be doing his word. Absolutely. Isaiah, that's obedience. Chapter 42, verse 24. Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Who gave them? Did not the Lord? Why were they turned into the hands of all these? He against whom we have sinned. For this they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. God's word declares you're turned over to the tormentors. You know, you're, you're, if, you if you don't forgive, you're turned over to the enemies. If you, you know, all these curses will come upon you if you don't walk in the ways of the Lord. If we don't walk in his ways and we're not obedient, remember obedience is going to be shown by your walk, isn't it? It's going to be shown by your actions. By, that's why he says your works and your fruit are so important. I know you by your fruit. I know you, your, your works. Your works are your key. They show whether you're obeying the word of God or not. God wants us to put the word of God first place. Do what he says. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 25. We lie down in our shame, and our confusion covereth us. How did they get to the place of being in shame and confusion on them? For we have sinned against the Lord our God, our, our, we and our fathers, from our youth even unto this day. Hey, that's the way they lived their life. And have not obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. They realize why they're in the state they're in. Those who continue to disobey throughout their life they're going to be in shame, they're going to be in confusion, and they're going to be, have sin continually bringing destruction upon them. You know, your sin will surely find you out. The wages of sin is death. It'll bring all kinds of destructive things in a person's life. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 23. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people and walk in all the ways that I've commanded you, that it may be well unto you. Notice the promise. If you're obedient and you walk in his ways, it'll be well unto you. But they hearken not, nor incline their ear, but walked in the counsels and the imagination, their evil heart, and they went backward and not forward. Why is somebody backsliding? Because they're not obeying God's word. And it won't be well with them. We can never go backwards. We should always be receiving what we have incorporated in our lifestyle and in walking continually in all the things. We're always moving forward. These guys walked in counsel's imagination, their evil heart. They wouldn't hearken. They wouldn't incline their ear. That's why a person goes backward and backslides because he won't do the things that God has commanded him to do. Since the day that our fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, unto this day I've even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising daily early and sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. See, that's the other thing. If you continue to resist what God's trying to get you to do, you'll keep doing sinful things and you'll end up be doing worse because remember the evil spirits are coming into you when you're sinning and you'll be doing worse they'll, they'll get stronger and stronger and you'll end up doing worse things in other words remember that's why if you're only here only you have an ongoing downward fall and you do worse and worse and worse and so you might sometimes you don't even realize how bad things are getting because you're so in bondage to the enemy these guys made big mistakes verse 28 
Thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. And then he says, cut off thine hair. It doesn't mean your hair. It means, it's the word for crown. The word lazar, which means the crown, as Young's brings out. Cut off thy crown, O Jerusalem, and cast it away, and take up a lamentation high place for the Lord hath rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. See, God's a righteous God. Some people say, well, I thought God was a good God, a loving God, and he's just, everything's always going to be good. No. I mean, just think about way back with Cain and Abel. Cain's offering was accepted, or excuse me, Abel's offering was accepted because it was the tithe. Cain's offering was rejected because he didn't bring the tithe. He just brought whatever he wanted. We can't be doing things that are contrary to the word of God. We cannot be rejecting the way of the Lord. It will bring destruction upon us. Jeremiah chapter 9. Verse 13, the Lord said, Because you have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, neither walk therein. See, that's the other thing. Obedience is going to show by your walk. Otherwise, it's, you know, you just didn't obey for a moment. You incorporate in your lifestyle, and this is the way you walk all the time. I mean, I didn't walk in love one minute, and then I got mad and angry and, you know, retaliatory the next minute and think I'm okay. No. You walk in it, you get, this is now your walk. You've, you've changed. You, this is why there has to be, uh, if the fear of God's before you, there'll be change in your life because of the word. They didn't obey the voice or didn't walk in it. But they walked after the imagination of their own heart. See, that's why you've got to guard your heart. And you've got to have given your heart unto the Lord. And get the word in your heart and keep the word in your heart. You can't walk after your own way. As long as you're an I, 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 me, me person, you're in trouble. Because you are, haven't given your heart to the Lord. You're directing your own steps. Walking after your own ways. Remember, he called them a rebellious people. You can be born again and have heard, uh, read the Bible ten times, you know, and, and listen to every message, you know, all these things. And if you don't do it, you're going nowhere. We're in trouble. We must have a heart that is yielded unto the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I'll feed them, even this people, with wormwood, and give them water of gall to drink. That means curses were going to come upon them. We see over in Deuteronomy, or Jeremiah 11, that is verse 3. Look what he says here. Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, God of Israel, Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant. Now, that says it straight out, doesn't it? If you don't obey, you're cursed which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them up out of the land of Egypt in the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice and do them according to all that I command you. So shall you be my people, and I will be your God, that I may perform the oath which I have sworn unto their fathers. I mean, it's automatically, not automatically going to be performed unless they met the conditions. To give them a land flowing with milk and honey as it is day. Then answered I and said, Oh, so be it, O Lord. And they, you know, they were, said they were going to carry this out and be obedient and walk in the things that God had told them to do. Then the Lord said unto me, Proclaim all these words in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, saying, Hear ye the words of the covenant and do them. For I earnestly protested unto your fathers in that day that I brought them up out of the land of Egypt, even in this day, rising early and protesting, saying, Obey my voice. These prophets were continually calling them to obey the voice of the Lord. God would be saying the same thing to us every day. Obey, 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 obey. Do what I'm telling you to do. Follow my ways. Yet they obeyed not, nor inclined their ear, but walked everyone in the imagination their evil heart. Their heart was evil because the word got taken out, anything that they might have heard. They weren't walking in it. Therefore, I'll bring upon them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they did not. Curses were going to come upon them because of their disobedience. Jeremiah 17, 23. They obeyed not, neither inclined their ear, made their neck stiff. That means they were stubborn. We can't be stubborn. We can't be hard-headed. We can't be resistant. If you have been stubborn, hard-headed, resistant, you need to get a hold of yourself and say, I can't be this way anymore. That they might not hear nor receive instruction. 
You'll hear, but you really won't hear. See, you can be hearing, but not hearing. They wouldn't receive, take the instruction, the discipline, the correction, what God told them to do. God is trying to help you to do, walk in the right ways. Now, if he's got some blessings that he says he's going to bring upon you because you were walking right, you've got to keep walking right. Because look what goes on here in verse chapter 18, verse 10. If it do evil in my sight that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. Otherwise, I'm going to bless you because you've been obedient. Are you quit doing it? Sorry, I'm ch changing my mind. I'm going to repent, change my mind of the good things that I was going to do for you. It's not going to get done now. Say, so, well, how could God take back what he said? Because you quit walking in the ways of the Lord. Otherwise, your walk consistently is how God knows you remember, and that's the key to seeing the blessings of God come forth in your life. Jeremiah 22, verse 21. I spake unto thee in thy prosperity, but thou said I will not hear. See, prosperity is great from God. Don't let it get a hold of you that you won't listen to God anymore. That's what happens to so many people. They get things, they get possessions, they get money or whatever, and they think, well, that's, I don't really need to listen to God too much anymore. <laughs> it's a mistake. I will not hear. Thou hast been thy, this has been thy manner from thy youth, but thou obeyest not my voice. And you know what's going to happen. Curses are going to come. So what does God want? He wants us to have the fear of God, which will bring change in our life. Here's what he tells them. 20, uh, Jeremiah 26, 13. Therefore now amend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord your God and the Lord will repent him of the evil that he hath pronounced against you. Not only would God ch change his mind from the good and say you're not going to get the good. Well, if there have been pronouncements of evil against you according to the word because of your disobedience, that doesn't mean it can't be turned around. It can be. If you amend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord, God will change his mind. Repent and change his mind of the evil that he pronounced and said was going to happen. It can be changed. Everything can be turned around. People that think that things can't be turned around are not believing truth. Things can be turned around in this nation. Things can be turned around in your life if you walk in the right way. But if you don't walk in the right way, they can be turned around the wrong for the good, for the negative, and you can always think everything's going great, and you can crash really fast. When the iniquity gets full, the, that thing will just break out on you and you can have all kinds of destruction if you don't change your ways and walk in the ways of the Lord. Jeremiah 32, verse 23. They came in and possessed it, but they've not obeyed my voice, neither walked in my law. They've done nothing of all that thou commandest them to do. Therefore, thou hast caused all this evil to come upon them. That's right. Evil will come because of disobedience to God's word. If the South in the 1800s would have read these scriptures and done what was right, we wouldn't have had a civil war. Jeremiah 34.10, Now all the princes and all the people which had entered into the covenant heard that everyone should let his manservant and everyone his maidservant go free. They're supposed to go free. That none should serve themselves of them anymore. Then they obeyed and let them go. It was the right thing. But afterward they turned and caused the servants and the handmaids, and when they had let go free to return and brought them in subjection for servants and handmaids, they wouldn't let them go. They made them slaves again. If they had read these verses, obviously they were backslid from the Word of God and didn't put the Word of God first place. They would have never been in that state. They shouldn't have had that state whatsoever. Slavery was wrong. Here they, but they did, they, here in this case, they, no, we want you back. We want you to stay and be our slaves. Terrible. Well, what happens? Verse 17. Therefore thus saith the Lord, you have not hearkened unto me, and proclaiming liberty every one to his brother and every man to his neighbor. Behold, I proclaim a liberty for you, saith the Lord, to the sword. You're going to get trouble and to the pestilence, and to the famine, and I will make you to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Curses would come. 
We must do the word of God or we are going to pay the price. Look what happened in this nation because they didn't do what was right. Jeremiah 35, verse 16. Because the sons of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, have performed the commandment of their father, which he commanded them, but this people hath not hearkened unto me. He's saying, well, these guys obeyed what they were told to do, but you haven't been obeying me. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, I'll bring upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the evil that I pronounced against them, because I've spoken unto them that they've not heard, I've called unto them, they haven't answered. Jeremiah said to the house of the Rechabites, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, because you have obeyed the commandments of John of Dab, your father, and you kept all his precepts and done according unto all that he commanded you. You did the right thing. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, John Adab, the son of Rechab, shall not want a man to stand before me forever. They were standing in the presence of God. Of course, you're going to be blessed when you're doing that because they were following the way of what they were told to do. Look at what Daniel's testimony is. In Daniel, chapter 9, verse 10. Now, Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. We didn't obey. We didn't obey to walk in his laws. That was a mistake. He's confessing their sins, see. Yea, all Israel's transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. That's right. And the oath which is written in the law of Moses, servant of God, because we sinned against him. He hath confirmed his words, which he spoke against us, against our judges that judges, by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven hath not been done, hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. Tremendous curses came upon them, remember. As it's written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us. Yet may we not our prayer before the Lord our God that we might turn from our iniquities and understand the truth. They wouldn't listen. They continued to go in their ways. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth, for we obeyed not his voice. God's righteous. He is a righteous God who will bring blessings when you obey, curses when you disobey. So important. We've seen this before when we talked about Haggai in the end times. In chapter 1, verse 12, it speaks of the remnant, these ones with the remnant of the people. As we've said, there's a remnant who are going to walk in the way of the Lord before Jesus comes back and become a part of the glorious church. They're going to be righteous and holy before him and go on to perfection. They obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet, which would be us obeying God's word as the Lord their God has sent them. And the people did fear before the Lord. They had the fear of the Lord before them. Because of when you obey the Lord, remember, in the me measure that you obey the Lord is the measure you have the fear of God before you. Then spake okay, he the Lord's messenger and the Lord's messenger and the people saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. And he stirred up these guys and the remnant and they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts. They did this work and they were building the house of God, which means for us, we build the spiritual house of God and be ready for the glorious outpouring that is going to come on the end time church that grows up and walks in his ways. At the same time, we can't be walking either in any kind of sinful ways. Just look what he says here. Zephaniah 3.1 Woe to her that's filthy and polluted to the oppressing city. Why did she get filthy and polluted? She obeyed not the voice. She received not correction. She trusted not in the Lord. She drew not near to her God. That's what happens. If you don't read the Word, you don't study the Word, you don't do the Word, you don't pray, you don't do all the things you know that He tells you to do. You don't receive the correction. You don't trust in the Lord. You try every other thing. Instead of the Lord, I'll try and maybe, you know, if something else doesn't work. <laughs> There's a problem. Is the Lord the Lord or not? Is He truly God? Is He truly your source? She didn't draw near to God. We see the same thing happening today. 
Christians will try everything else before they'll start trusting in the Lord and doing the things that he told them to do. Zechariah. Chapter 6. Verse 12. Obedience is mandatory. Zechariah 6.12. He spake unto him and saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold the man whose name is the branch. Who's that? Jesus. He shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Today, you and I are the temple of the Lord. He is building the temple of the Lord in you and me through the word of God in us. He shall build the temple of the Lord and bear the glory. The glory of God's going to come into it. He'll sit and rule upon his throne. And we make him Lord, put him first place. His rule and reign will be operating in our life. He shall be a priest upon his throne. The council of peace shall be between them both. Otherwise, this is the word shalom. God's peace, soundness, safety, welfare, health, prosperity, all these blessings will, will be between both. That means between the Lord and us, the ones who are the ones the temple of the Lord being built. And crowns shall be to these ones. Caleb means the one who has come to the place of strength. Caleb here. Tob Tobijah is one means Jehovah's good. So as you come to the place of having strength, you are seeing God's goodness. Jediah means God has known. He knows you because you're walking in line with his ways. Remember, he, knows, he doesn't know the guys that are walking in lawlessness or unrighteousness. He knows those that are walking his ways. Hen, favor, you get the favor of God. The son of Jephaniah, who Jehovah has treasured, it means. So if you have strength, if you're walking in God's goodness and he's known you because you're walking in his ways and you have the favor of God and he treasures you because you're, you're his peculiar treasure, remember? For a memorial in the temple of the Lord, which is what you and I become, and they that are far off, well, that would be ever in the pre succeeding generations, which includes us, shall come and build in the temple of the Lord. Remember, we are building in this temple. You're building things every day by what you're hearing and doing. And you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto me. And this shall come to pass, these crowns that come to them, if you will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. Obey what? Coming and building the temple of the Lord. Are you building your spiritual house? Are you building the things of God in your life? You need to be building the things that he wants you to build so that you grow up in all things and become everything that he purposes for you to be. That means you're going to have to set your will to do what he wants. Choose what he wants. Set your heart that I am going to give it unto the Lord and I'm putting him first place. I put the word first place. I'm not walking after my own ways. I deny myself. I'm going to crucify the flesh daily. I'm going to follow his word. I'm going to do what his word says consistently in my life. And we'll look at one last scripture, which we'll jump over to the New Testament. Remember the Corinthian church had all kinds of problems. If you will read through Corinthians, he's correcting them on thing after thing after thing after thing, trying to bring them in line. Well, this is, where, this is what he says to them. 2 Corinthians 2, 9. To this end also did I write that I might know the proof of you, the proving of you, whether you be obedient in all things. He's saying, hey, are you guys getting, are you being obedient in all things now? He's bringing them correction so they can get on track and walk it in the ways of the Lord. That's what God wants. He wants us to come to the place of being obedient in all things. We walk in love at all the times. We rejoice all the time. We keep our eyes on him so we say in perfect peace. We're long-suffering in every situation. We're going to show goodness and gentleness in everything we do. We're going to put away all the anger, put away the resentment, the bitterness, all these things. We're going to forgive every person that's wronged us or hurt us. We're going to cast out all the demons. We're going to be ready to resist the temptation, steadfast in the faith. We're going to be ready to preach the gospel. We're going to be ready to pray the word of God and do whatever needs to be done. We're ready to give out. We're ready. Just all these things the scriptures tells us to do in every situation. We're not going to allow ourselves to get depressed down, discouraged. We're going to take every thought captive. We're going to only speak good things. We understand we can't be speaking corrupt communication. We can't be a place of the devil. We're not going to let sin anymore in our life. We're going to deny ourselves, crucify the flesh daily. 
We're going to destroy the soul realm directed life. We put the word first place. All these things that we've been teaching you on all these areas, are you doing them? Have you denied yourself? Have you got rid of the I, 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 me, me, me? Put a tape recorder on your back and listen. Hmm, there's a lot of I, 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 me, me in this. There's something wrong here. How about what the Lord says? What's been coming out of your mouth? What's, what do you think? What do you do? What's your fruit? What's your walk? What are your works? See? Obedient in all things. God wants this word in you so much, it's your lifestyle. And you live in the fear of the Lord all the day long. Remember, the whole conclusion, the whole matter was fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. If we'll do that, we'll walk in the ways of the Lord. Obedience in all things. That's what God wants for every one of us. Then you're going to be blessed. And those blessings will come on you and overtake you in your life. But if you don't, we give place to the devil and no one, now the devil comes in and brings all this destruction. But the good news is you can confess your sins, you can repent, God will forgive you, cleanse you from all unrighteousness, you can correct every problem, come in line with the word, and you have dominion to cast out all the demons that have come in from inheritance, your own sins and victimization, and get set free. And you can be healed and delivered of everything. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're on that page and we're moving in that direction. We are going the way of obedience. That is what God wants for every one of us. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the Word of God that brings revelation of the importance of obedience. As we've seen these scriptures, place after place, throughout the Old Testament, we see when they obey, blessings came upon them. When they disobeyed, curses came upon them and they saw all kind of calamities and they hindered God from bringing his blessings to pass in their life I thank you I am putting the word of God first place in my life I will be obedient according to the word I will be a doer of it not a hearer only I will incorporate the word into my lifestyle the things that I've been taught the things that I've been instructed, I will do them. Correction coming to me, I will hearken to it. I will obey it. I will be ready to do what God says. And it will be said of me that I have the proof that I'm obedient in all things. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're accomplishing in my life. As I put the word first place and am obedient in all things, I know your blessings will be continually coming upon me and overtaking me in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. The Lord is wonderful, and he will do great things. But his word is truth. And if we think we can just ignore his word and not do his word and don't see the repercussions of it, we have been deceived cookies. And so many are out there like that, thinking it doesn't matter. No. Now we know the truth we will walk in line with the word. Father, I thank you that we have ears to hear. We will be obedient in all things. We will cut off all areas of sin. We will do what you command, incorporate your word into our lifestyle and walk it so that we become like Jesus. And we go on into perfection. We become the glorious church. And we see your blessings coming on us and overtaking us in everything that we do because we are hearers and doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.